Good evening, Bishop George T. Brown, Jr., First Lady Angela Brown. We are from Calvary Outreach Fellowship Center. It is our Bible study tonight, and we're going to be talking about taking a walk through the valley with the shepherd. So we're excited about Bible study tonight. Tune in, um, share, post, hit some comments. We're trying to make it real big tonight because we really want to encourage God's people. So at this time, First Lady going to jump in, and she's going to take us deeper into a walk through the valley with the shepherd. Hello, hello, the Murray's online. Um, so we're going to be from Psalm 23, and it's really David, a shepherd, talking about, a good shepherd talking about the greatest shepherd. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so he starts it off with, the Lord is my shepherd. And I love that because to me it's affirmation. It's it's affirming where he is in, uh, as in, ref ugh, in reference to where God is also. So uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, so we have to make affirmations to let the devil know that we know. Yeah. <laughs> and when you talk about God being shepherd, that means he's leading, he's guiding, he's directing, he's instruction, he, he's ordering steps. Yeah. So David clearly understands that when I'm walking through this valley with him, he's leading me, he's guiding me. I'm just there getting the instruction and direction that he's leading me into. So it's, it's an amazing psalm. Most of us read this psalm, it becomes our favorite uh, psalm, our, our favorite writing of the book. But now we're gonna dig a little bit deeper and really talk about the power of a shepherd. And also Bishop, um, he didn't say, uh, my Lord is my shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, yes. So that's like the highest of the highest. Uh, he, he owns me and I own him. So it says he's my shepherd. And when you talk about shepherd, David definitely understands that what a shepherd does. Yeah, a yes. shepherd leads, guides, and protects. Absolutely. Amen. And so he says this. He says, "I shall not want." Mm -hmm. Why? Because he definitely knows that it's the shepherd's job to lead the sheep. Wow. To where to get the bread? Yes. <laughs> now, and, the, and the leading process is good. Leading and guiding. I can lead you there, but let me guide you as well. Because you can get somewhere and not be guided. But he says he's going to lead and guide me. And, and he's not going to want anything because he's being led and guided by the true shepherd. Yes. And Bishop, if, if you say that I stand in need of want, that's probably saying that the person that's shepherding you isn't doing their job. Ah, that's good. That's, that's good. So David says this. He makes a declaration. The Lord, the Alpha and the Omega, is my shepherd. Yeah. So that's power and security right there, just saying who, who I belong to. Mm -hmm. So And therefore, I shall not want. Because it's not just any Lord. It's the Lord. Wow. Okay, so I shall not want, okay? And so also you got to understand that the person who is over you draws from their resources. Mm -hmm. And if it, this is the Alpha and the Omega, the one who made all things, and his resources are infinite. Wow. Okay? So he says this, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Mm -hmm. So he knows where his help comes from. And I believe in this time we ought to know where our help comes from. Because some people are looking for FEMA, some people are looking for a stimulus <laughs> check, and think. But he says, because the Lord wow. is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because He makes me to lie down in green pastures, mm -hmm. so I don't have to go get the pastures. I don't have to go for nagle it. And that, and that to me also says, because He makes me to lie down in green pastures, He knows where the green pastures wow. are. Wow. Yes. And and He leads me where beside still waters. Yes. So the place that He's leading me is a calm place. It's a peaceful place. Anytime God is leading you, God is leading you somewhere you haven't gone, you haven't been, but he's leading you in a calm, stabilized place because he wants to show you something. He wants to give you some direction. And it's amazing to know that when the Bible talks about this peace and this joy that we have, it's only because we're allowing the shepherd to lead and guide us through life. And this valley, let's go deep into the valley first, lady. Okay, he says, he restores my soul. Mm -hmm. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So here it is. Now, uh, not only is he uh, the shepherd leading and guiding me uh, to to supply my physical needs, mm -hmm. it says he restores my soul. Wow. Yeah, that's So good. he don't just take care of, of, <laughs> of your natural and not your spiritual. It's so if you get weak anywhere down the road, he says he's going to restore my soul. He's going to renew my strength. He's going to refresh in me. He's going to give me a restoration period. Anytime I get weak, he's strong, then I become strong. And Bishop, he says, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Mm. So, it, it, again, he's not just going to supply your uh, natural, but, um, and, and I'm finding out, like, in this time, like, people are, uh, some people are afraid 
um, because we're going through this uh, worldwide pandemic. People are afraid, people are antsy, people are nervous, they're getting anxiety. And so you can have your natural um, wants taken care of, but mm -hmm. you, if you're, you can still fall to pieces. Wow. But this is saying the Lord, he restores my soul and he leads me in a path of righteousness. But here it says, for his name's sake. For his name's sake. So not that we get the glory, but so you will know that I have a, not just a good shepherd, because David was a good shepherd. Yeah, he was a good shepherd. Because the Bible, he told, he said, I killed a lion and a bear. So you know he was a good shepherd. He was protecting his sheep. Yeah. So, uh, but he's talking about the greatest shepherd. Amen. And I think what's amazing about being led by a good shepherd, David had proper training to understand what it was to actually be a shepherd over sheep. So anytime God is going to take you somewhere, he trains you first. He gives yes. you the ability. He qualifies you for where he's getting ready to take you. So I, I want somebody to hear this tonight. Where God is taking you, he's preparing you. He's qualifying you for it. He's giving you the ability. So you got to get ready to go through the training ground, the training course, because where you're getting ready to go, it's truly going to be amazing. It's going to be a part of your destiny. Okay. Well, I want to go back. Can I go back again? Because go I, back. I just, to me, is he making me to lie down in green pasture? So uh, he takes care of, of my my food, mm -hmm. and he leaves me beside still water. He takes care. I will not thirst. I will not go hungry. I will not thirst, and I will not go crazy in this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because some people are getting cabin fever, uh, Bishop, and they're just going all over the place and stuff. But this is a time to draw near to the greatest shepherd of yeah. all time, and it's not a time to worry. It's okay to be concerned, but understand what worryation do. Worryation can be worse than the coronavirus because worryation can cause you heartache, stress, heart attacks, anxiety attacks. So be concerned, but don't worry because you got a shepherd that's leading you and guiding. Y'all know we sing that song, Order My Steps in Your World. He's ordering David's steps. All David is doing is saying, I'm going to let him lead me. I'm going to let him guide me. He's going to bring me into peaceful places. He's going to do great things in my life. And I promise you, by the word of God, if you keep your hand in his hand, he'll take care of you during the valley. Amen. And so David says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. So no, people don't want to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Nobody wants to walk. We want to walk through the green <laughs> pastures. We want to walk by the still waters. We want to chill out. But wow. he says, yea. And so he acknowledges, yes, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and we know David's history because we know David has been on the run. They have been chased by everybody, the uh, Philistines, and just everybody had beef with David. Um, but it says, he says this, yay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he says, yes, even though I walk through the valley, and I hit like this, of the shadow of death. So it's just the shadow of death, wow. okay? Because we know. That uh, Jesus conquered a uh, death, hell, and the grave. That's it. And he said, I'll fear no evil. <laughs> yes. Because you got to understand something. Shadow is just an appearance. Fear is false evidence appearing real. He did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So right now, while, you, while you're watching, just if anybody's next to you, tell them you got to have a sound mind in this season. You got to have a sound mind because the enemy, your adversary, the devil, he's very tricky. But he can't mess with our mind when it's sound. And I, I think you really touched on something, Bishop, because it's like it's uh, the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. And so just the shadow can be, you know, when you were little, you saw a shadow, you'd be afraid. Yeah. And so, but it's a shadow. It's not the real thing. A shadow is just a, a, a fake image of the real thing. Or, or but, but we become afraid. Wow. So now is not the time to be afraid. Now is the time to trust in the greatest yeah. shepherd of all and, time. And, 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 and get on high alert. Get on high alert. Because when you're on high alert, you're ready for anything that comes your way. Um, you're stabilized. Um, um, you're, you're, again, your mind is sound. You know exactly what God is doing, what God is saying to your life. And once you know those things, you're going to be very, very well prepared for what God is getting ready to do in your life. So we want, we want to encourage you. We want to empower you and challenge you. Now is the time to step up to the plate. Get on high alert. Get in your prayer closet. Man, grab your Bible, start reading, start studying like never before because you are getting ready to go through a valley, but the shepherd is going to walk with you. Yeah, so, and David says this, and this is another declaration, I will fear no evil. Mm. Well, why? Because he is the greatest shepherd of all times. And because, uh, and so I think um, sometimes we can just look at where we are. Yeah. But it's good to look back and see where you've been and where he bought you from. That's right. That's right. So he knows that he he lead me, he led me into green pastures before. Because, uh, you know, back in the Bible days, they had a lot of, uh, what do they call it, where there were droughts. 
Yeah. Uh, and so <laughs> when you talk about steel waters, and if there's a drought, there's no rain, you're not going to have green pastures. You're not going to have, you know, the steel waters. Uh, but he, but that good shepherd knows where to find, you know, at the time of the need. And I'm reminded of the prophet when, when God sent him to the brook Sharif, and then the Bible said, the brook dried up. Wow. <laughs> but, talking about talking about Elijah. Yeah. He says, so the brook dried up, but God still made a way for the man of God. Because he says, I'm going to make sure you sustain. I've got a widow woman that's going to take care of you over in Zarephath. So even though it dried up, oh, I got something. Even in a dry season, God knows how to feed the believer. In a dry season, God knows how to take care of the believer. Yes. So if you're a believer tonight, God is taking care of you. God is doing great things in your life, and he is manifesting some powerful things. Yes. All you got to do is stay stuck to the mere fact of God is who he said he is on every hand. And Bishop, also um, a shepherd, a good shepherd, knows the layout of the terrain. Yes. And so it's good to know that the Lord Jesus Christ is our shepherd, and he's gone before us. Mm -hmm. And he's mm -hmm. behind us. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Yes, God. So he knows where to lead you. He knows the hot spots, the trouble spots. He knows when you're going to fall. He knows when you're going to need him. He knows all things. All things. So we ought to have comfort that know, to know that he is the good shepherd. Mm. And I like to say, again, the greatest shepherd. And when First Lady said he know all things, what does the passage say? All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and them who are the called according to his purpose. So as long as you understand you've been called to the purpose of God, you have an amazing destiny in front of you. All you got to do is keep your hand in God's hand. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. No matter what happens, God is still in control. Bishop, when he says this, I will fear no evil, again, that's an affirmation. And so um, the time to affirm something is definitely when you're going through something. Yes. And so you have to know that you know. So faith is not about the other person knowing. It's about you it's knowing. It's about you knowing. You have that blessed assurance that yeah. he's going to take care of me. <laughs> uh, and so he says this, for thou art what? with me. Mm -hmm. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So good to know that he's with you at all times. And um, sometimes we're, 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 we're looking for, we're looking for signs. You just have to know that you know because he's omnipresent. So yeah. he is with you. But here's the part that we got to look at too. It says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yes, God. So, you know, um, so, I know people, the parents used to always say, that's the rod of correction. You know, <laughs> back in the day, and that means you were in trouble. <laughs> but, but this rod of correction is when you're going off, when you're going astray. Uh, maybe your thinking isn't right. Wow. It says that rod and I self. See, David looked at the rod at the, to be a comfort, mm -hmm. not a disciplinary tool. Sometimes people look at discipline as a bad thing. Yeah. But the Bible said, whom he loved, he chastens. Yeah. That means he chastises you. That means he'll correct you. That's it. So if you're going astray, if you're, um, George Myers said, you have stinking thinking, mm. then the rod, it will it's a comfort. Yeah. Because you don't want to go off straight. You don't want to uh, spiral downhill and nobody stops you. And the great thing about it, even if you do, even if you do, think about the rod and the staff. For the sheep, it was to bring them back in line. It was to bring them back. So God know how to get us back to where we're supposed to be at any time of falling apart, going somewhere we don't have no business. God knows how to bring us back to himself. And, and what I love about this, this comfort, no matter where you are in your life, no matter what time it is, God is there to comfort you. We were at a service the other night and it was something profound said, we have summer, spring, winter, and fall. And those are seasons, but we have a now season. And our now season is for the believer because now God is getting ready to do great things because one writer said, now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory to the wise and exceeding God, exceeding joy. He's going to give you exceeding joy to him be glory, dominion, power, both now and forevermore. You're getting ready to walk into the richest of what God is saying to your life, what God has shared with you, what God is speaking in your life. David had a personal experience walking through this valley of the shadow of death. And he says, I'm not going to fear nothing because thou art with me. His rod and staff comfort me. Next, he's going to prepare a table. So it's going to get better. Yes. But, um, and one thing, Bishop, I, um, it really strikes me because David is saying thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm reminded when, when um, David was with Bathsheba, 
And then, you know, um, the prophet says to him that you are the man. He was had a story about a man took another man's ewe lamb. And so David faltered. Uh, but when when you talk about David, he's known as the greatest king ever. Yes. But we know another king, Solomon, who had riches. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying, why was David the greatest king when Solomon had so many riches wow. that the, the, the half had never been told? So I think, to me, David... Again, he was always, the people were always um, against them, the Amor- not Philistines, all of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember, David went to Ziglag and uh, everything. So um, he was a warrior. Wow. So yeah. he was the greatest king because he delivered the people just like he delivered the sheep from the <laughs> lion and the bear. Yes. And so David knows the value of a comfort, a rod, a staff, a correction, uh, a reprove, a... Uh, um, a covering. Yes, yes. He, he knows the value of, of to have someone to guide you. I remember one time David was on the run for his life, and he ran. Well, as many times he was on the many run. Many times on the he run. He ran into the cave, <laughs> and he consulted the Lord. And I think right now, in, and matter of fact, any time that when we are uh, don't know what to do, we need the rod and the staff, but uh, but you got to remember it says, "But you are with me." Yes, you that's are it. always with me. Mm-hmm. But we don't necessarily always uh, ask the Lord for guidance. Yeah. And 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 David had, like you and I have, David had an assignment. When God gives us an assignment, yes. we're going to go through different things. But what I love about the Psalm, it says, "He's going through." But to get where you are going to go, you've got to go through what you've yes. got to go through to get there. To get on the other side, you got to go through something. And right now, uh, we're dealing with this this coronavirus. It's just something we're going to go through, y'all. But we've been here before. We're going to get through this. We're going to get past it because we have a good shepherd that's leading, guiding us. He's showing us different things. Now is the time that our ears must become sensitive to the voice of God because he's definitely speaking. He's speaking in the earth. Um, he's giving us direction. He's giving us order. And he's sustaining us through it all. So, you're not going to lose anything. You're not going to lack anything in this season. I know it looks crazy. It sounds crazy. But I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to believe what God said. And he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. He would be with us to the end of the world. Um, he's making provision for us. He's caring for us. So no matter what's going on, God's going to make sure that the believer is still fed. There's provision. He's going to sustain you and he's going to keep you. So don't let this valley fool you. Don't let this valley cause you to get wavery. You've got to get stable steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain vain in God. God. Keep going, First Lady. It says, Thou preparest a table before me uh, in the presence of my enemy, and thou anointest my head with oil, Mm. my cup runneth over. But here he goes, he says, Thou preparest a table before me, but also in the presence of my enemy. So the table is set, um, but even though it (laughs) says, before me, I'm thinking ahead of me. Yes, that's good. Because that's one that's thing good. that we don't realize that that he establishes your ways. Yeah. Wow, wow. Okay, and he says, but in the presence of my enemies. Mm-hmm. We might not like that part. <laughs> but he says that, but you have to just know that the table is prepared. Yeah. That he is the greatest shepherd and he go, he's gone before us. Yeah. And the thing about it is the plan of God. So understand this. God has a plan for all of our lives. So when he say before me, before you get there, I've already been there. I've already set this in place for you. Thank it's you like Lord. predestinated, um, preordained. Thank you, uh, what, what God uh, ordains, God will maintain. So David was ordained by God to go through everything he had to go through. But in every area of his life, God maintained him. God, God stabilized him. God put him in places that was kind of shaky, but God was always right there. Remember, he went before Goliath. And, and, and he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine defying the very army of the living God? Everybody else was running, talking about how bad Goliath was. But David said, listen, I know the God I serve. I don't need no armor. I'm coming to tell somebody, you don't need no armor. All you need is God's word and your faith and your trust and your belief in God. And this will be the year you're going to be giant killers. You're going to be giant killers because some giants are going to jump up in your life. But God has already given you the power the authority, the anointing that every yoke in your life shall be destroyed and you will become giant killers this season. Don't let nobody fool you. You are in an amazing time of your life. It says, thou anointest my head with oil, mm-hmm. my cup runneth over. So here he says, and I remember that he says, thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And this is also in conjunction with that. And thou anointest my head with oil. Yeah. So he talks about elevation 
Um, but all also represents the spirit. Yes. So yes, we got, you know, we we all said, oh, he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. <laughs> so you just want the enemy to see you doing good. I know you want that, <laughs> <laughs> but he's not really concerned about that. Uh, but he, it, the thing is not what what God wow. is doing for David. The thing is what God is doing. Yes. So David is he's telling you what God is doing. But at the same time, he's giving God the the praise and, and the glory for that. Mm -hmm. That you could do this for me. That you could uh, prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Wow. That you can anoint my head with oil. Mm -hmm. uh, but he also okay, said this: My cup runneth over. Wow. And 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 listen, first lady just says something very profound. Anoint my head with oil, he's preparing for the next level. He's preparing you for the next level. So whatever you're going through, please understand, my brothers and my sisters, you're only being prepared for the next level. When you go from Genesis to Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all the way to Revelation, Old Testament, New Testament, everybody that God did something for, they had to go through some stuff to get to that next level. Your destiny is in front of you. It is amazing. And God is going to order your steps and some great things are going to happen to you in this season. Not only to you, but it's going to happen to your family. It's going to happen to your family. There's a song that somewhere in the, in the, uh, um, uh, the writing of the song, it says, everything attached to me win. Everything attached to you will win this season. Do not be fooled. Everything, everybody attached to you will win this season. So you might as well tell your sons and your daughters that God is going to do great things in their life no matter where they are right now. God has a plan for their life, and we can only believe what God has said versus what we hear, versus what we're seeing, then we're going to watch the hand of God move greatly this year. Talk to him first, lady. Okay, I'm stuck on um, five, because again, God prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemy, so we could have this vision of a table that is set, mm -hmm. and the table, if you know God going to prepare a table, and um, again, he's going to draw from his resources, yes. so the table's going to be stacked. Okay. Hallelujah. In the presence of my enemy, but the main thing here is to me is he anoints my head with oil. That's it. That's the main thing because the oil represents the spirit. Mm -hmm. Just remember the oil ran down Aaron's beard. That's God. The oil represents the spirit. So, but we don't want to get um, natural blessings and not get um, spiritual elevation. Oh, yeah. You, know, you don't want to just get uh, that's good. Yeah, you know, material elevation. Uh, and elevation with men and no spiritual elevation, mm -hmm. okay? Because mm -hmm. you can lose it all if, you're, if your spirit ain't right, right. all right? Uh, and here it is again, it says, my cup runneth over. So uh, how many of us wow. want the cup to run over? Yes. All of us but want the cup to run over. But you got to realize that your cup <laughs> runs over for a reason. So again, because, um, you know, a lot of people are hoarders. They, they're not people in the store taking all the toilet paper. And I'm like, well, oh, I better go get me some toilet paper because they're get going crazy on toilet paper and stuff. So there's some people are hoarders. And, and if the cup ran over, they just still keep it to themselves. Mm. But your cup runs over, so the Bible says we're blessed to be blessings. To be blessed. Everybody wants that David type of anointing, but people don't want to go through what David went through. Wow. And but David was a good shepherd again when he when he was um when he had his men. Uh, and the men it came in the field, and he was concerned about his men eating. Yes, yes, He wasn't God. just concerned about his own self eating, because um, I'm talking about the story with Abigail. Yes. All right. So, so hear this part. Everybody loves the blessing. I love the blessing first. Lady loved the blessing. I'm quite sure you that are listening love the blessing. But here is something more powerful than that. God wants to make you a blessing. When you're made a blessing, you have the power and the authority and the resources. To bless somebody else. So I, I'm blessed, but I want to be made a blessing so that I can share the blessings that God has placed upon my life. So so let's go a little bit deeper this year. Yes, yes, yes understand we're blessed. But now let's start talking uh, spiritual language like, Lord, I love to be yes, blessed. But now, Lord, yes. make me a blessing yes. so I can bless the sister over there, the brother over there. Maybe somebody struggling here, my neighbor. Make me a blessing. Now, when God make you a blessing, remember what the scripture says, to whom much is given. Much is then required. So there's some requirements that's coming with the blessings, but you can handle it. You can handle it. And here's David making another affirmation. As a matter of fact, most of David's songs were affirmation because he wasn't writing these psalms after he's been through the trial. Mm. He was writing these psalms in the midst of the trial. Wow, that's all it. All right? So he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord, what? Forever. Forever. Again, he says, surely. Yeah. So he has, he says, that, that tells me he has 
faith in his Lord. Mm -hmm. That tells me he has no doubt about what his Lord can do and will do. He says, it shall follow me. That's an affirmation. So he's not him and oh, I'm about look at what I'm going through, look at me and all this. Uh, he's making an affirmation because he says, I have faith. In, and you know, this is my little thing I've been saying that I'm going to embarrass the devil. Ah, oh, embarrassing. So David was embarrassing the devil left and right because he would always write these Psalms when he was going through what he was going through. Yeah. And that's the affirmation of who I know who my God is. That's it right that there. I have no, the devil wants us to be afraid. Wow. The devil wants us to walk in fear. The devil wants us to have doubt. Mm. He doesn't want. He so he doesn't want us to praise God. He's he's so jealous. Uh, he's so jealous of, of us. But the but the Bible says he knows his days are. The number. The number. And they're short. So so hear this. You and I have, the power, to stay. We're getting revelation. We're getting confirmation. We're getting more wisdom and more knowledge. So what God is sharing with us now, is that. When the church come back into the full capacity, we can actually go back to the sanctuaries and the people come together. I believe our churches are going to pack out, not only with members that's there, but now the world. People in the world now are seeing that God is still on the throne. Uh, Matthew 24, I believe it's 14, talks about, and this, this word of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world, that it might be a testimony to the nations and then the end shall come. I'm not telling you anything about the end coming right now, but I want you to hear what the word of God says so that we we continue to be upon high alert, continue to love one another. Let's continue to blast Facebook out, um, um, Instagram, YouTube, your, your uh, church's website so that the world can actually get this word, so they can get this word. And right now, guess what, y'all? It's being preached all over. We ain't talking about pulpit. We talking about pulpit. Every time you go on Facebook, you give a testimony, you gave a word. Every time you talk about God, you're giving a word. So now, guess where our pulpit is? It's in our home. It's in the grocery store. It's when you're walking in your neighborhood, in your community. We have now developed pulpits outside of the sanctuary. So now this gospel is getting ready to go throughout the whole world. And the nation is going to hear who God is and how good God is. And they're going to understand we have a true divine shepherd. And all we got to do is walk through the valley with him. He's going to lead and he's going to guide us in all truth and righteousness. And Bishop, I saw um, Pastor Thornton watching. And I saw uh, a shirt that Lady Ashley had on. And it was, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But paraphrasing. It says something like, you ought to get, your, get your, your spirit right like you get your edges right. Be more concerned about your spirit than you are your edges. Exactly. I don't have edges. So I'm not worried about that part. But listen. It's time for the church, the kingdom of God, to get upon high alert. We're in an amazing season of our life. No matter what it looks like, I'm telling you we are in an amazing season because our faith is bigger than what we see. Because what we see is what we see. But we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. So we believe in God that 2020 is going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit yes, and the church yes, of the yes, living yes. God. This too shall pass. So hold on tight. Keep your head up. Y'all lift y'all pastors up, y'all bishops, y'all elders, those that are leaders, lift them up. Um, listen, no church budget has this virus. No church budget has this virus. So I'm saying to all the leaders, all of the lay members, continue to tithe, continue to give seed, continue to give offerings because your church still has got to survive. It's not surviving off spiritual food. It's going to survive off the natural. So still give your tithe. I know every church has given different ways that you can give. Um, ours is, um, dollar sign Calvary 920. You can give your seed. You can, um, give your tithes, your offering. We're going to be available to watch the hand of God move mightily. And again, this is the year that is going to be a major outbreak of the Holy Spirit. You're talking about an outbreak of the coronavirus. It's going to be an outbreaking of the Holy Spirit coming yes. real soon. I believe God and I trust God. Any final remarks for us, yes, lady? Bishop, I wasn't going to finish, but, uh, when, when I was talking about that shirt, but let you get your spirit right, because mm -hmm. again, um, a lot of times we worry about natural stuff, but you definitely need to have your spirit right. Yeah. Um, the spirit gives life. Okay. And like he says, it says, um, I, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Mm -hmm. And here's another affirmation. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Yes, God. And so you have to know that, uh, that Lord, that's your shepherd, the, not just the good shepherd, but the greatest shepherd. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever provisions are in the house, if you dwell in the house, the provisions are there for you. 
And I'm not just talking about natural because you definitely need some spiritual uh, covering, some revelation, some yes, comfort. You need that. So he says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord, my shepherd. And so that's another affirmation that no matter what storms come, wow. no matter how hard times get, I will dwell in the house of the greatest shepherd because he leads me, he guides me, he has led me to green pastures before. Uh, Bishop said, we've been here before. No, we haven't been on a global pandemic, but we've had some trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. We had some ups and downs, but the Lord always <laughs> saw us through. And so we have to remember that. Uh, I like how you said he did it before and he'll do it again. But I definitely believe like you're saying, there's going to be a spiritual outpour because um, traditionally uh, when, when um, things like this happen, it, it comes to cleanse. Yes. yes. Uh, and then the cleansing is gives revelation to the truth yeah. and people are going to seek the Lord. Um, I don't want, I don't want them to seek the Lord because you're afraid he's not going to put fear on you so you can seek. But even though things are happening, don't think that the Lord is putting it on us so mm -hmm. we can see him. No, just life happens. And that's because the things happen. Remember, he's an omnipresent God. Wow. And he's there to, to, to be with you, to be your Lord, not just in a physical and monetary and mm -hmm. stuff, but definitely in spirit. in spirit. So in all you're getting, you get an understanding, but you understand you better get your spirit right. And get it right now. Amen. So here we are. We're getting ready to close We've been talking about the invisible enemy. We've been fighting the invisible enemy our whole life. Yes. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. The pulling down of strongholds. Are y'all with us? Yes. God bless you. We love y'all so much, man. Um, keep in tune with us on Facebook. Uh, the Church of the Living God is getting ready to do great things, amazing things. As you hear that song in the background, man, God is not leaving us alone. He's not leaving us alone. He's here, right here by your side. So get with your family during this time. Um, you know, have some fun, laugh, smile, uh, watch some Netflix, do some games. Just enjoy your family because God is getting ready to do amazing things in your life. We're going to pray with you right now in the name of the Bishop, Lord. Bishop, can I also ask him to share the video, um, have a watch party. There you go. And also, um, you can. we're going to upload some more videos on our um uh, web page and that's Calvary Outreach Fellowship Center dot org so you can also find us there yes Father we thank you we're grateful we're honored God that you've given us time to share with the people of God we're looking for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit this season we love you so much everyone that's watching us on Facebook bless their family bless their ministries bless their homes bless their children and cover us continuously with the blood of your son, Jesus the Christ. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love y'all so love much. You. Peace out. Greatest we'll shepherd. see you soon. Amen.